All right, in this example, we're going to work with relations again. We're going to do a simple proof involving the domain, the range of a relation. We're going to work with the sets A and B. So A and B are just sets. And we're going to let R be a relation from A to B. So we know what that means. We know that that means that R is a subset of A Cartesian product with B. So R is a set, and each element of R is just a coordinate pair, an A comma B, where A, little a, comes from capital A and little b comes from capital B. That's just the definition of a relation. What we're going to do in this problem is we're going to show that the relation R is a subset of the domain of R crossed with the range of R. So one of the things we first need to do is just recall what we mean by the domain of R and the range of R. So the domain of R consists, it's a set, and it consists of all the A in A, such that there is a B in B with A comma B in R. So if we wrote down the domain of R, it would consist of just a list of things where everything listed was an element of A. But we can't write down every single element of A. We can only write down the elements of A such that there is an element in B such that A comma B is in R. Okay. Range of R is similar. The range of R is just a set and it consists of just a list of things. Each thing in this set is an element B in B but we only write down the elements for little b and capital B such that there's an A in capital A where A comma B is in the relation R. Okay. So this is the definition of the domain and range. And what we're going to do is we're going to show that R is a subset of domain R crossed range R. So to show a subset relationship we need to start with some arbitrary element in the left hand set. In this case that's the set or relation R. And we need to show that it's an element of the right hand set. So we're going to start off with a comma b in the relation r. So what does that mean for a comma b to be in the relation r? Well, that means by the definition of how a relation is defined, that we know that a is in the set a and little b is in the set b because that's how relations are defined. All right. So now looking at this, we now know that we have a b in r, we have a in a, and b in b. So we can conclude very easily just by looking at the definition of the domain that the A has to be in the domain of R. And that's obvious because we, we know that there exists a B and B, and we also have A, B, and R. So the right-hand part of the definition of the domain of R, the, such that there exists a B and B with A, comma B, and R, that's all true. We have a B and a B, and we have A, comma B, and R, and A is an A. So we know that A is in the domain of R. We can do the exact same reasoning for concluding that B has to be in the range of R. Look at the definition of the range of R. We need to know that there exists an A and A with A comma B and R. Well, we have A, B and R, and we have an A and A. So the B that we have is in B, and it is in the range of R. So we conclude very easily that B is in the range of R. So we started off with an arbitrary element, a comma b and r. We now know that a is an element of the domain of r, and b is an element of the range of r. By the definition of the Cartesian product, then, we know that a comma b is in the Cartesian product, because that's just how Cartesian products work. a comma b is an, is, a, is an element of the domain of r crossed with the range of r, just by the definition of the Cartesian product. So we started with this arbitrary element, a comma b in the relation r. Using the definitions of the domain of r and range of r, we were able to conclude very easily that a is in the domain of r, b is in the range of r, and thus by the definition of the Cartesian product, the element a comma b is in domain r cross range r. So we have that r is a subset of the domain of r cross the range of r, and that's what we wanted to show.